What's happening, people? It's your boy RD, and today I'm going to be answering you lot's assumptions about me. Let's get it, I'm ready. You're always the last one to leave the party. Your assumption could not be more true. I'm always getting badded up by my team. They're like, oh, you know, like, it's not the same as when you was younger or like when you weren't in a public image and blah, blah. You can't be the last one to leave the club or the party all the time. Like, it's dangerous for you and etc. etc. Your bank account has seven figures. My bank account is nobody's business apart from my accountants, mine and my business managers. No one is getting that answer out of me. Next assumption is you were always getting in trouble at school. I wouldn't say I was always getting in trouble. That's more like true and false. I was always getting myself out of trouble in school. So the trouble would start and I'd have my gift of the gab and my way of getting around things. And that's why I ended up being one of the only if not the only person out of all my mates that were expelled from the school and that. You secretly wish you were taller than H. Nah, I really, genuinely actually don't. Obviously, large up the boy, but if, height, if confidence is all about height, everybody wouldn't assume that he's my height. They'd all assume that I'm his height. So, he secretly wishes he was my height. Because then, it, then everyone would be right about what they assume about him. You prefer blondes over brunette. I prefer personality over hair colour because you can change that all the time. I was about to say you're true, but there's two females in the room watching and one's kind of <laughs> blonde and brunette, so I thought, let's, let's play that one safe. I've always been confident. Yeah, your assumption again is correct. I think that comes from just how I was raised and how brought up and being just happy in like my own skin and like if you do like me, sick, and if you don't, sick, have a great day. You get playing at Nando's. No, I do not. That assumption is wrong. I love me some spice. I'm always trying different spices and I'm the only person in my family that eats hot sauce and yeah. So you're wrong. Basically what you're trying to call me is like unseasoned and all them things there, which ain't the case. Uh, my whole entire Nando's order, I'd get hot fries and maybe hot wings if I'm like mad hungry. Then I'd get a medium wrap and then some halloumi cheese. I don't get the chips, I don't, I hate peri peri chips. The salt is just like sand in your mouth. It's too much, like, it's just the texture of it. it makes me cringe. You have a secret Instagram account. I don't, you know, this is a conversation I was having someone with, rec um, with someone recently and they were saying that like, a lot of artists have burner accounts. But I don't, I do my thing all bait face. Again, I don't really care if you think that it's like, oh, you should cover that up or whatever. You keep your circle of friends small. I feel like everybody knows at this point that is absolutely correct. You only ever see the same two faces with me in the videos. You ain't seeing no like, oh, that's new, that's new. You're gonna, people recognize every single one of my friends now because I don't keep many of them. The next assumption is you're always hungover. I would say true, yeah, but I've been so well behaved recently. I just gotta pat myself on the back a little bit. So you're wrong, how about that? But normally, I am a hungover person, but it's only because I party kind of days in a row and I'm good at getting over hangovers. So I party the first night, then I wake up, slap a fry up, sort my stuff out, strong-minded power through that, because that's the worst possible thing you could do for your hangover is stay in bed, get up and have a cold shower, stop being lazy. You're the youngest child out of your siblings. I am, I've only got one older brother that I live with. I've got half siblings and that, that I ain't been really that in contact with and whatever. You see yourself living in Brighton forever, one million percent. I love my hometown, it's the reason I am who I am and why I am and where I am and what I am and all of them things. All the other cities I've been to, as lit as they are, you can't beat Brighton, but also the Brighton, can you can have the best of both of that mad peacefulness up on the downs and the hills and then go down to the nightlife and sick. You're a mummy's boy, 100%. Uh, love my mum to bits, she's my biggest fan. She never wants me to leave the house and even started talking about she's gonna do a CP course so that she can be part of security and that, which obviously I had to give a firm no to because you can't follow me around everywhere. That's absolutely mental, but I do love her. You prefer old school rappers to new school. It depends in what sense. In UK wise, I'd say, that music's developed a long, a long way and there are loads of cold UK artists popping up everywhere at the moment and more versatility and different sounds and whatnot. But also I love grime and garage and things like that. If you're talking American, then a million percent. I am not in tune really, and I should be as well. It's something that I'm trying to keep up with now because they are cold. The more I learn about it, there are some cold artists like, um, yeah, like Gunnar and Lil Baby and them people there. But I, my playlist is 
old school. You want loads of kids in the future. Absolutely false. Do you know what? I don't want to say I hate kids yet, because that makes me sound so evil. But you see when like there's a, like, a child's like four, five, six, and you have to have a conversation, and one, pretend you care about what they're saying about, and two, understand what they're saying, and then you have to chat to them as if they're like a person on your intellect level. Like, it's just so frustrating for me, and I can't be bothered. Nine, ten, bit maturer. Them couple years are good, and then they hit puberty, and then they think they're bad, and it's like obviously, it's, 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 yeah. I know what I was like as a teenager, and I would not be having what I was doing. You can't cook. If I could cook, I'd be cooking a lot more often. I'd like to say I can. My old man always tells me anyone can cook. You just have to follow instructions and don't set the house on fire. But I don't do it. I'm a delivery man, so large up delivery. You're into more sportswear than luxury designer. 100%, this is definitely true. Apart from Stone Island, obviously I'm always, always in my stony and I wouldn't necessarily call that sportswear. Like maybe back in the day, but not anymore. But also I've been getting into my designer stuff a little bit more. My stylist is always trying to push me into all them lavish kind of outfits. And it's not like, like I said, it's not really me. I prefer to just roll up to the club in my tracksuit. In the summertime, I turn up in the club in, cause I club in Brighton, I'm wearing shorts and no t-shirt. and. Maybe even sliders if it's that hot. You always leave people on red. Wrong. I leave people on delivered because I don't even want you to know that I've seen it. Yes, people, it's been your boy RD answering your assumptions. If you don't know already, my brand new mixtape, Peer Pressure, is out now, available to run up on all platforms. Love.